We talked tonight with the Secretary General for OPEC. Sir, it's a uh, real honor to sit down with you. Uh, Thank I you very much for having me. Sure. Um, I would like to start with, obviously OPEC has been in the news for a historic agreement to oh. cut production. Um, could you tell us what has made this agreement possible between all member countries? Thank you very much uh, for having me on this very important uh, program. Uh, as you rightly said, uh, we had a historic uh, agreement according to uh, uh, the global community who acclaimed the outcome of our conference in Vienna where we reached the Vienna Agreement which basically uh, is to implement the Algiers Accord which we entered into in Algeria on the 28th of September. And this agreement uh, will come into effect on the 1st of uh, January mm -hmm. uh, for a period of six months uh, to be continuously reviewed as we go forward. And uh, in uh, implementing this agreement, uh, we are also working hand in hand with uh, our fellow non-OPEC uh, friends uh, countries. Uh, we are due to meet with them this Saturday, Saturday the 10th of December mm -hmm. in Vienna. Uh, so uh, for the first time we are having uh, uh, a joint uh, uh, action uh, 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 between OPEC and non-OPEC uh, and that is historic. Of course, it very much is. As you said, the agreement is going to start to be implemented starting January. Mm -hmm. What kind of impact do you expect this to have on oil prices? Our primary objective, both ourselves and our non-OPEC friends, uh, is to bring this market back to balance, uh, to restore equilibrium in uh, prices uh, by um, having a, a significant stock drawdown mm -hmm. that will bring down the level of stocks uh, to a manageable level, uh, preferably um, around the five-year average that mm -hmm. the industry normally keeps uh, and uh, by that we'll be able to restore stability and then work in the medium to long term to ensure that this stability is sustained. Of course, as you said you are about to meet as well with non-OPEC members mm. um, and OPEC has actually been very much open you know up until last week I think Indonesia had come back to OPEC and then had to leave but more importantly India is is now the third largest energy consumer in the world mm. um, and and with with this status in mind what kind of relation does OPEC has with the Indian authorities? This is a very important question because we have established uh, uh, an energy dialogue mm -hmm. between OPEC and India uh, we had our first meeting uh, kick-starting this dialogue in December of 2015 and uh, I just had a meeting with the Minister uh, of Petroleum and Gas of uh, India uh, uh, and we discussed our next uh, meeting in May, June in Vienna uh, and the program uh, for this meeting. Uh, so uh, our relationship with India is a very strategic relationship mm -hmm considering the fact that nearly 90% of uh, oil requirements of India is being imported from OPEC uh, member countries. Sure. Uh, and uh, as you also said, uh, India has emerged as the third largest consumer of oil in the world and the fastest growing uh, nation in the world. Uh, and with the focus of the government uh, under the uh, visionary Prime Minister Modi uh, targeting uh, uh, energy poverty as one of his uh, 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 priorities. Uh, you cannot fault this strategic alliance between OPEC and India uh, to be able to combat energy poverty in a growing economy, large economy such as India it is in the interest of both India and OPEC member countries who are the major suppliers of oil uh, to this great country uh, to strengthen this dialogue, uh, to upgrade it to a partnership. And this is what we agreed uh, with the Honorable Minister this afternoon. 